sorry that I didn't uh, you, uh, uh, hit punch you me. across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Babe, you're not punched. Don't tell me what it feels like to be punched. You, you know, even a lot of fights have been around a long time. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, when you fucking have a closed I fist. You get punched. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. you can't I don't know what me. the po motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine. Things are only getting worse for Adam Levine. You have to see. Okay, thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for clicking the little bell. Welcome to another episode of What's Going On? What's Going On? Now, this is from OK Magazine. Bombshell. Model, what is that, Marika? Claims Adam Levine sent her naked photos. Now, that in and of itself isn't that bad, but the guy was fucking married to a pregnant woman. Marika, one of Adam Levine's alleged flirtations, has come forward to claim that the Maroon 5 rocker sent her nude photos. Despite his marriage to Bahati Prinsloo, the comedian said that she and Levine started talking on Instagram a year ago. Now, we're going to start stop real quick. Have you noticed? This is the way these things are supposed to happen. Adam Levine got busted out last week, right? And after he got busted out, women started coming forward on their own. I'm going to say that again. Women started coming forward out at Adam Levine on their own. They weren't recruited. They weren't sent fucking emails and they weren't shown fake ass FBI letters like Scissor Sister El Magor did to Marilyn Manson's accusers. So you're literally looking at the correct way that these kind of accusations are supposed to happen. I assumed he was getting a divorce, Marika said in a Friday, September 23 interview, adding that she and Levine initially started sexting after he told her about the issues in his relationship. So she was pregnant and he's talking shit about her too? Damn, bro. God. Damn, dude. And that's because this guy's supposed to be all male feminist. Oh, I'm a male feminist. Yeah, you're a fucking predator is what you are. He was using his fame. That's essentially what he was. He was banging his fans. Really, bro? In his relationship with the former Victoria's Secret model, he had some weird kinks, like he loved to be called good boy? What? The influencer explained of Levine, while making it clear they did not have physical contact, he often flirted with me. Marika revealed that she made the decision to stop talking to the voice coach when he panicked after his friend's Instagram was hacked. I thought that was weird, so I decided to quit with him and stop talking to him. My last texts to him were telling him, you should stop doing this stuff, you have a wife. Ooh. From the top rope, she got his ass. Uh, and he told me he would have stopped. She continued, what? And he told me he would have? What do you mean? He then vanished for a whole month. What? 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 He, and he told me he would have stopped. But that doesn't mean he did. What? He then vanished for a whole month. The brunette beauty dished about her contacts since with Levine. Haven't heard from him since then. In one of the alleged messages between herself and the married father of two, Marika told Levine how she wanted to go on a social media detox, to which he replied, distract yourself by fucking with me dude she has a genuine need here like I, I feel that all the time i would love to be able to get off twitter you know i'd love to be able to sign out and just not be in that toxic shithole um for at least a day and i can't do it because every time i like start getting upset and i, I delete the app that's what i do i have a love hate relationship with twitter i'll like get angry and i'll be like look i don't want to hear this shit anymore i don't want to read about this shit anymore i don't care so i'll delete the app and then like two hours later, it starts hitting. I start itching. I start itching and I'm like, what's going on out there? What's happening? What is going on? Because that's how it is on social media, dude. Either you're on social media 
and you're uh, misinformed or you're off social media and you're uninformed. And I think the longest I've ever gone off of Twitter, and I mean Twitter, I'm not talking about Instagram, I'm not talking about Facebook, I've been off of those before, it's easy, you just delete the Facebook app, nobody really gives a shit about Facebook anymore, Instagram too, nobody really cares about Instagram the way they used to, but but deleting Twitter, that's one of the biggest ones because it's so addicting, you're literally up to the minute on, on everything, so then like two hours later, I'm like, what's going on out there? What are these people talking about? What's happening? Am I missing something? Is something going on? Is there something big? Oh, so so then I'll literally download the app again and get right back on it. It is a it's horrible, but yeah, I totally agree with her. A social media detox, you know. Well, then again, she's an influencer, so I'm pretty sure Instagram for her is a big deal. But ugh, a social media detox would be perfect. It did like five days. Could you imagine five days? with no social media, how peaceful that would be. But then you're just like, what's going on out there? What's happening? As OK previously reported, on Monday, September 19th, Sumner Stroh was the first woman to come forward with allegations of Levine stepping out on his marriage. The payphone vocalist later released a statement admitting to the online flirtation, but made it clear that he never had a physical relationship with anyone other than the mother of his children. I used poor judgment in speaking with anyone other than my wife in any kind of flirtatious manner. I did not have an affair. Nevertheless, I crossed the line during a regrettable period of my life. Levine stated, in certain instances, it became inappropriate. I have addressed that and taken proactive steps to remedy this with my family. Well, there you go. If that's true, good for him. Good. You have to, that. This is the thing. This is the, how I am. You have to be able to shit on somebody the same way Amber Heard shit on Johnny Depp's bed. But you also have to be able to give people the props they deserve. So if that's true, if he is taking steps to remedy this with his family and his wife, then good for him. Good job, bro. Okay, now we got a little lightning round. And today the topic is uh, Olivia Wilde and Don't Worry Darling. So let's get into this from Pop Crave. Florence Pugh and Olivia Wilde got into a screaming match on the set of Don't Worry Darling at Vulture Reports. Florence was so upset she told then Warner Brothers boss Toby Emmerich she wasn't going to promote the movie. I haven't seen her anywhere. The only people I've seen promoting this movie are Olivia Wilde, of course, Harry Styles. I really haven't seen her promoting it. Mm-hmm. So well, there, there you have it right there, screaming match. So she was being abusive to Florence Pugh on set of her movie. So there's that. And then here comes the damage control. No, from Entertainment Weekly. No, Olivia Wilde and Miss Flo did not get into a screaming match on set of Don't Worry Darling, according to 40 crew members from the film. Now, here's a good rule that I've learned when it comes to independent media and mainstream media, whenever independent media comes out and says something, and then literally either that day or the next day, you have mainstream media like this coming to pick up the pieces and coming to say what the independent media uh, said isn't true, that usually means it's true. Because these kind of people, the mainstream media people, that's what they're there for. They're there for damage control. So if you had to ask me, who do I believe? Do I believe Entertainment Weekly or do I believe Pop Crave? I'm going to have to go with Pop Crave because I think that there's no doubt in my mind that Entertainment Weekly definitely has some connections to some of the people like Olivia Wilde. And as well, some not not necessarily Amber Heard, because I haven't seen anything from Entertainment Weekly positive for Amber Heard. At least I haven't seen it. But I do think that these mainstream media uh, outlets, they have a connection to these, you know, these feminist women that are really high on the ladder. So they have to make sure that they don't look bad. So do I do I think that she got into a screaming match? I absolutely do. And then and, and this is this one right here, this right here. I, w I want to show you this, and I want you to pay attention to this. This right here is why nobody takes feminism seriously anymore. Look what this says. 
regardless of what actually happened on the set of Don't Worry Darling, regardless, regardless, it is genuinely insane that this has received more media coverage than David O. Russell's mistreatment and verbal abuse of his female actresses on the sets of I Heart Huckabees and American Hustle ever did. This is why nobody takes feminism seriously. You have somebody coming out saying that, hey, whatever Olivia Wilde did, if, if she got into a screaming match, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Who cares? Who cares about what Olivia Wilde did? Why don't we talk about what the man did? Why don't we talk about what the male did? Well, because he abused and verbally abused and mistreated his female actresses. Well, apparently she did too. That's what it says there. They got into a screaming match. If a man got into a screaming match with a woman, then essentially that's abusing her, isn't it? So you're telling, and this is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that again. This is why nobody takes the current wave of feminism seriously at all anymore. Because this is all it is. Oh, well, whatever Olivia Wilde did, ugh, I mean, it, that doesn't even matter. We don't have to worry about that. Why don't we talk about what that man did, though? Look at what that man did. Look at him. Oh, we need to talk about that. This is why. From page six, Kiki Lane claims most of her Don't Worry Darling scenes were cut. Now that very easily, very easily relates to the last one. Because if a white male director would have done this, it would be front fucking page news and there is absolutely no doubt in my mind about that so you have it right here she's a, a person of color poc that's what they like to say in that in that uh, uh society part in that part of society oh poc bipoc Wah. well wh wh why aren't you coming down on olivia wilde for cutting out all of the person of color scenes oh because she's part of the crew, so you can't come down on her because then, oh, well, women have to stick together. This is why nobody takes y'all seriously. If a man would have done that. Oh Olivia Wilde discusses her approach to focus on female pleasure in sex scenes and don't worry, darling. Men don't come in this film. She declares only women here. What? What the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? What does this have to do with anything? What are you talking about? What does it have to do? Who cares if m only women come here? Men don't come in this film. What? Like, this is the kind of thing that goes on in these people's minds. And this is like reading that. You read that. Hey, bro, you know what Olivia Wilde said? What, bro? What, what does she say now? Dude, she said that only men, like, they're not going to come in the movie. What? Why are people coming in her movie anyway? I don't know, bro, but she's just like basically singling out men's orgasms or something. That's fucking stupid. And that's exactly how it is. It's so fucking stupid. I don't understand why people think this way, you know, and really, I'm just going to be, I'm going to be as disrespectful as I possibly can. If you are angry about only men coming, then that might be a reason that you are choosing the men you're having sex with. Because women can orgasm. If you're if you're angry about men orgasming, because only men orgasm, then maybe you might want to choose a different sexual partner, Olivia. <laughs> another one from Entertainment Another one from Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> Olivia Wilde can't help but wonder if the coverage around Don't Worry Darling would be different if she were a man. Oh, so that one is relating to the other one. Regardless of what actually happened on set of Don't Worry Darling, it's genuinely insane that this has received more media coverage than David O. Russell's mistreatment and verbal abuse of his female actresses. Okay, well, uh, Zoe Rose Bryant, not only did Olivia Wilde mistreat her female actresses, she also cut out her female persons of color actresses she cut them out from the whole movie so zoe you might want to shut the fuck up because you don't know what you're talking about sorry okay well that's going to be about it for today thank you for liking and subscribing thank you for staying with me this long we will catch you next time